In this video, I'm going to talk to you about vocal cord paralysis or vocal fold paralysis. And actually, it probably is a bit more common than you might think. And why does this happen? Why can it happen? Well, most commonly, it happens after surgeries, perhaps a thyroid surgery. Sometimes there are growths on, on thyroid glands, sometimes cancerous, sometimes not, and they have to be removed. Larynx nerves are close to the thyroid gland. Very often they do get bruised or slightly damaged in the surgery because the goal, of course, is to remove the tumour or the growth. But in that process, sometimes the nerve will be a little bit compromised through no fault of anyone, but just that's the way it has to be, just to remove whatever they're removing. The damage that happens after that can be temporary or it can be longer lasting. So cords that get a full paralysis may sometimes not recover their movement. In most cases, paralysis happens just to one of the vocal cords, not both at the same time. And when that happens, you have one vocal cord that opens and closes normal and one that just doesn't. And so there's usually a gap and there's air that escapes. The voice becomes much weaker and hoarser like this. And through therapy, very often, we can regain some of that function. And the goal is really to get the cord that doesn't move as well to regain some of its movement or at least for the cord that does move well to be able to travel over a bit further and get more closure. Now, when it's a full paralysis and there's very little recovery, there'll be often a surgical solution. And one of them is to inject some kind of filler material into the cord that doesn't move as well. And so by making it a little bit plumper, it will achieve closure better. So that's one option. And again, it does tend to work better when combined with therapy because then you want to maximise and optimise things that can also assist with the vocal fold closure. So a combined approach can be very helpful. So vocal fold weakness, a partial paralysis or a paresis or a full paralysis can happen after surgeries. Surgeries to the thyroid gland is one. There can be other growths around here that might also impact the laryngeal nerves. Sometimes big heart operations as well because the the nerves that go up to the larynx also go close to the heart, so sometimes they can be slightly compromised. And less commonly known are partial paralysis that happens or weaknesses that happen what they call idiopathically. So they just happen and nobody really knows the reason why somebody's vocal cord got weaker. Very often it can be due to a virus. Some viruses do attack the nerves of the larynx a little bit. And fortunately, they can be temporary. And I find with those cases, the people who do work with a the therapist on that do make good progress. So it's something to consider. It's not the end of the world if your vocal cord does develop some weakness, but it will take some building up again. Depending on the degree of paralysis or weakness, the voice will be affected in different ways. The most common characteristic will be something like breathiness or a hoarseness, because the air will be escaping through the vocal cords when they don't meet properly. Another way is roughness. Sometimes the voice develops like a kind of a constant creak to it because it's just not working as well as usual. And that can be quite distorting. And also pitch can be affected. Some people go quite high and airy like this. And some voices will, will lose their ability actually to get quite high. So this is particularly important when it's a singer. But also just the normal person will find that their voice just lacks a little bit of, of range. And I guess a big symptom is fatigue. People often say, you know, my voice is not so bad in the morning, but come one o'clock, two o'clock, I'm just pretty hoarse. The other thing is swallowing. So any weakness of the vocal cords sometimes means other muscles around their larynx are also affected. Not being able to get full vocal fold closure also exposes the airway a little bit. And so bits of saliva can hang around a bit more and, and irritate the larynx and cause a bit more throat clearing. And also your swallowing can be slightly affected as well because um, the muscles that are involved in swallowing are also the ones that are involved in speaking and voice often. So losing some of that power means that sometimes swallowing is a little bit more effortful or you might find it's just certain food textures don't go down as well. Speech therapists also work with swallowing because the muscles involved are very similar. So swallowing therapy may also be part of your therapy sessions when you're also trying to improve your voice. Although some function will be regained with therapy and sometimes enough to not need anything else, in some cases, surgical solutions are recommended. And that's usually in cases where the vocal cord has just not regained any of its movement 
or sometimes when the vocal cord is a bit fixed to one side. So the closure is just really difficult. So in those cases, they will use a material, inject a material into the vocal fold to plump it up a little bit, a bit like how people actually plump up their lips to give it a bit more fullness. And that allows the vocal cord to move more to the midline and for the closure to happen a bit more easily. So your therapist will be able to discuss those options with you and your ENT consultant. That will have been recommended often. And sometimes they say, try therapy first and see how that goes. So if this happens to you where you develop a weakness, a paresis or a paralysis of the vocal cord, there are very many things that can be done. And therapists will be happy to start you on that journey and see how much voice can be regained. And there are also surgical solutions. If you found this video helpful, click the like button and subscribe to the channel.